Aiden. Yo, Stian, what do you think for a potential mission within the next few days? Well, I thought this is a really good idea. Yeah, looks pretty good. I think it looks pretty good. It's our facing, which I think is the only real option right now. We are on our way to Chamonix to meet up with Norwegian skier Stian Hagen. He is an absolute ski legend and has been skiing professionally for more than 20 years. Now he lives in Chamonix with his family and is ready to take us on an adventure in his backyard. With all the years of experience Stian has in the mountains and being a local in Chamonix, we are very excited to start this two-day journey with him. Hey, man. Hey, guys. Hey, man. How are you doing? Good. Good to see you. I'm almost thinking that we, the snow might be better than we think. But, yeah, wow, well, I have very low expectations. Yeah. But at the same time, I feel like uh, it might have snowed a little bit more up high than we think. Do we? Yeah. yeah. There's like a measurement station in the, on the Salinas Glacier. Yeah. And I think that's the closest like, thing we, um, we're going to be, like uh, skiing wise. Yeah, yeah. And, th and, that, and that's at 11 centimeters. Exactly. That, that will be perfect. So with a little bit of wind and 11 centimeters, it's going to be the second biggest powder day of the year. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna do the first, uh, basically, kind of the first uh, day of the hot route. So we're gonna go from here, the Le Grand Monté, over the Col de Chardonnay, to a small bivac hut on the Swiss side, bivac du Doré, and spend the night there. And then uh, we're hopefully gonna climb and ski this car tomorrow. So yeah. We'll see. Uh, it's been a little tough snow conditions lately, but we kind of have a hope that we might find some good snow. This is the Argentier Glacier and the Argentier Basin. And now we're gonna ski down here, cross the glacier, and then head up the Col de Chardonnay, which is the lowest point of the ridge in front of us. And uh, we might have to do a little rappel down on the other side of the col. And then we're sliding down to the, to the bivac hut from there. So I think it's funny to point out one thing yeah. is that I always call you Mary Poppins because I don't know if you noticed but Sion has a 16 liter backpack and if you look at those monsters that we've on our backpack 42 and he can carry everything in there we'll how see. do you do it well we'll see we'll see if I have everything but, uh, <laughs> I think so uh, I think, well, you have cameras and a lot of other gear too, though. Yeah, that's right. A lot of it comes down to experience. What do you actually need and what you don't need? And being conscious about the weight and the size of the gear that you, you put in your pack. But uh, I guess we'll count our chickens when we get to the other end. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's funny, the ski crampons, I think we all haven't really used them a lot, but it's actually pretty nice. So we're almost arriving at the Col, Col de Chardonnay. We've got to put our crampons on and do a little boot pack up to the Col. Yeah. And then it's going to be interesting to see what it looks like on the back, because I haven't been there for a couple of years, and normally it's, you can either down climb it or it's a bit of a rappel. Yeah. But with that super warm summer we had last summer and uh, the dry winter we've had now it might just be a pile of rocks so how does it look uh, not too bad definitely i think we need to get the rope out oh yeah we'll probably put this crampons on do one thirty meter rappel and then see where we're at might do another one, if not, maybe you can down climb from there. Yeah, there it is. So there's the line, and there's the hut. Beauty. Oh, 
Well, as I always have my rope flaked in a, in a troll bag like this because it's so much easier to throw it if you're going to use it for a rappel and also if someone is in a crevasse, I can now throw my rope uh, and I don't have to go that close to the traverse. But the easiest way to get it into the bag is to clip it uh, through your uh, clippy carabiner, through your uh, helmet strap and then you can just push it in with one hand. It's, this is an old uh, uh, canyoning trick, I think. You can actually see the line that's, that we're skiing tomorrow. It's the one there in the corner. Looks I pretty. I would say if this series is called Hidden Lines, I think that uh, definitely uh, hits the brief. Definitely, it's yeah. It's fairly hidden. So what's the plan here, guys? I think the plan is to let the sun come around the corner a little bit, because the line we're skiing is south facing. Yeah. So we definitely- uh, We're not in a hurry. We're not in a super hurry, no, I don't think. A little bit of uh, heat and sun is not gonna be bad for it. And it's kind of nice to enjoy just being in the mountains, just sitting, watching the mountains without just always rushing through them yeah. on the way to do something. It's not every day you get to just sit in a place like this and enjoy the view definitely so yeah let's chill a bit more have the sun come around and then we go i'm really curious to see what the snow is going to be like it's like skiing down from the hut 500 meters we've had powder ice like any snow type you can ever imagine and it's almost impossible to say what it's going to be like up there and where are we going to ski well so since this thing is called hidden faces it's a hidden core that's up behind here <laughs> yeah. oh yes finally a good look at the at the couloir well, what the snow what looks like <laughs> well from here the snow looks like absolute rubbish but uh we didn't come all this way just to turn around here. We've no. got to go up there and figure it out. But the concern is that it gets less sun than expected because it's deeper and these like other peaks on the on the edge of the car kind of shades it quite a bit. I mean, like ideally, we would have thought I would have had a couple of hours of sun already, yeah. which it doesn't look like it has had. You know, that was kind of the original plan why we came today was that it's going to warm up today. Yeah, that's and uh, it was south facing and we were hoping that we we're going to get it in good corn. Um, but uh, I'm, I'm still doubting a bit like, okay, should we wait a little longer for the sun to actually do something or? Reality is that we have nothing to lose to give it a little bit of time to see if the sun comes in and does something. Yeah. yeah. Even if we're going to ski it maybe in a bit less good snow than we were expecting, I'm still really keen on skiing it, of course. Yeah. Me too. Yeah. But I think it's worth going up there and That's just good. feeling it out though. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You know, if it's soft, then... You know, we, we might just start walking. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Not so bad. It's always warming up here. Yeah. So we found this little nice little ledge here with a lot of little rocks. So we've been chucking them off. <laughs> Seeing if they bounce or not, that one bounced really good. <laughs> so we're not quite ready yet. So we're looking for, we throw it and it just stops, right? That would be ideal, I think. Yeah. That will uh, definitely be a lot better than what it is now. Yeah. <laughs> it bounces really good right now, <laughs> unfortunately. So we're leaving our little balcony. And let's try to climb up. The snow should be a bit softer, so we should try. I think we all agree that it's 
It's not ideal, <laughs> but uh, we're gonna ski it anyways. <laughs> now that we're ah, here. I don't know. Like, I think the conditions, like with these ice balls, it's it's like really solid everywhere. I don't feel soft snow. To be really honest, like could be fun, but yeah, if it if it doesn't like warm up, I don't see a point skiing it. Actually, like I know there's we want to make a movie. No, no but for me, I I we're here now, and uh, the next section here looks less steep anyway. Yeah. So I figure we at least go up a little bit higher, and then we can hang out and wait a little bit and see if it warms up. Nah, but let's let's go a bit higher and uh, and see. But I agree with Paul that if it doesn't make sense to go higher, then. That's the size of the bit pack. It's cute. Really cute, huh? Pretty cute. That's what I was trying. Yeah, let's wait max 30 minutes. It's not really getting better the snows and it's getting pretty windy so yeah we're just going down and uh, make sure we get down safely yeah you too enjoy I would say it's worse than expected. Well, that felt like some good old fashioned extreme skiing. No, we seriously have to take it really, really, really easy. Yeah, he said it's worse than expected. And we expected yeah. kind of the worst. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Nice. Cool. Well done. Yeah. That was interesting. This this last part was this what is, we wanted. Exactly. Yeah. If it was like this the whole way, it would have been a, like a super nice and dry sea. No, because it is kind of the conditions where if you fuck up or if a binding pre-releases, something happens. That's, you know, that, that was my fear. You're probably not going to survive. But overall, yeah. I think a pretty good uh, experience. Yeah. Oh, the yeah. whole journey Wonderful. in the mountains, like the two, two days. Mm -hmm. Pretty For cool. sure, yeah. yeah and, and we still have a really beautiful way to go, like all the way over the glaciers and stuff to yeah. into the valley to Switzerland. Well done, boys. Yeah. yeah. Thanks a lot, guys. I'm glad everyone's down in one piece. I was like, yeah. <laughs> and now let's just cruise, cruise down. It's always stressful to wait. Like that on top of the line too. You know, like your head starts playing games with you. It's just like, it's way steeper. Oh no, it's nicer than I think it was. Oh, what's gonna happen? Oh yes. 
made it. Nice. Nice one, guys. Yeah.